Hi, uh, welcome to Jade Time Gaming. I'm Adam. Uh, today I'm going to do a flip through and review of the Encounters, Plots, Places book by Benjamin Gerber. Of, I believe it's uh, Troll in the Corner. Um, I got this through Kickstarter. It's uh, I think the first role playing game Kickstarter I did, and it took him quite a while to get it out. Um, I don't even know if they currently have the print version for sale uh, available online other than through the Kickstarter, but the PDF they definitely do. Um, it is a system, it is a fantasy system neutral book. Um, it doesn't really have any stats at all for any system. It's just ideas. It's a book of ideas for a fantasy setting. And a lot of them are really creative. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll probably mention just a few. Uh, as we flip through, and I'll skip over plenty, but, um, I mean, they're really creative ideas, but the book's flaw is some inconsistency. There's inconsistent uh, layout and uh, formatting, and inconsistent art quality, but the ideas generally remain pretty sound. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, they introduce and sort of say how the general layout's going to be, although occasionally things differ from that. Um, and like here's one of the things with the formatting. The first, you know, thing that big title there is the header for this section here, and I just, you know, it's one of those things. Um, ultimately, I've like they could have spaced it out better, put a space, made the header at the top of the page, like this first. You know, essentially what they do is, in the book, they have uh, NPCs, encounters, items, imp places, and adventure hooks. Um, like, this first NPC goes over the story. It's a 14-year-old necromancer who kills her parents. Um, and, and it just sort of goes over her backstory, and every for everyone, they give some adventure hooks to you know, to go into that character. Um, they have, like, a the personality of this, uh... It's awakened, an awakened wolf. Uh, various NPCs. Um, you know, uh, the better the... Immortals, um, hmm, yeah, someone that's either on a mission from the gods or totally crazy, uh, I mean, and then they do at times leave things open to what you'd want, um, and I mean, some of the art in here is pretty cool, uh, very much different artists, um, I mean, like the Waykeeper here, and Sweena here, clearly the same artist, you know, following pages, whatever, uh, <laughs> I guess this is, this is like the story, this one is like, uh, an immortal that's taking on mortal life, uh, to experience it. Uh, here's another weird thing, uh, and one of the reasons maybe the PDF would be better, there are clearly hyperlinks in it, hyperlinks don't work in a physical book, uh, cause that, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so they have, they have some NPCs, which have pretty full stories, and everyone has a couple of adventure hooks to hook in the, the characters. And they, then we get to the encounters, uh, and this is a dragon that, like, disguises itself as, like, other races. Um, Uh, merfolk, I think they have power ratings between, I think, 1 and 10, like, uh, this particular merfolk is 1, but essentially, like, they, they go over, like, a whole story about how she is mistreated by surface dwellers, and so they have the merpeople kingdom at power rating 7, because essentially, you know, there's nearly, you know, depending on how the players go, there could be a war between the merfolk and the surface dwellers. Here's, you know, what I mean with inconsistent art. It's a uh, poor quality CG art. Uh, I just hate this piece of art here. Um, which, of course, is a gray. No, no, no. It is a tiny insect. Um, just looks, you know, like a gray. 
<laughs> Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> that one I don't like. The art turned me against him. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, a, a mad ghost. Let's go here. Pseudo death. Oh, uh, Patra is a dragon that loves shiny things, treats, and impressing others. He, that's an interesting one, and as much as this is just a pencil drawing, I love this little piece of art. It's so detailed. Um, oh, an iron golem suit, uh, which is just like a cool idea to make it where it, because ultimately it's still a golem, but it's a golem that you can wear. I don't know. Cool idea. The sentient tree. Oh, this one. The the half size army of children. Like it goes over this story in here, and essentially it's someone that is uh, using magic to kidnap children, and then sends them them back like, over like months. Children just start disappearing, and then they get sent back uh, to the town that they were taken from as an army, and told either. You know, either you're, you're going to kill your own children, or they're going to kill you, or you're just going to give me the town. And just sort of the way that that, that works. I mean, that, that's that's a cool idea. I like that. That was creative. Um, Manicor. Then they have magic items. Um, the dice here. They have, you know, magic dice, which ultimately lean very well to a chart of applying magical properties to a player, which yeah, is a really cool list of system-neutral, just magical effects for a player. Um, then we get to places. Uh, this first one was probably one that I I loved. It was, it's the, the Veil of Peace. And essentially it's an area where a paladin died and his final, you know, valiant paladin, his final wish was for peace. And so essentially the, the whole area around where he dies prevents anyone from fighting and and all that kind of thing. It's just a peaceful spot. Uh, floating caverns, hidden city, uh, some named towns, uh, and then we get to just general adventure hooks. Um, a brand new bag is the first one here, and it's kind of creative. Um, essentially, you know, as the party you know leaves the dungeon that they've conquered they realize that they've just come out of a, uh, what appears to be an ordinary cloth sack. And, you know, are they in the same world? Are they in a different world? Are they on a different plane? Where are they? Um, you know, so, I mean, that's a really creative, you know, mind-bending kind of one. Um, there are some simple ones. Uh, it has been raining nearly a month straight. Blame is laid on the local hag who is in the caves within the nearby cliffs. You know, that's very straightforward, simple. Uh, field of dreams in the grasslands of Rang, dreams do come true. This becomes problematic for the player who gets chosen for the first watch while their companions sleep. I like that. That's creative. And then there's, you know, silly ones like uh, the small clothes conspiracy. Someone has convinced the local tribe of goblins that human underwear is immensely valuable. But, uh... And yeah, here, here's one of the reasons I hate the formatting. I feel like something went wrong with the formatting. I'm actually kind of curious if I had the PDF version, if it, it's gotten fixed and it's just the print version. Because um, I don't have the PDF version. I'm kind of wondering. I'm sure that that's the kind of thing that got sorted out late, and that might be why they don't have the print version available online currently, is they may be sorting that out after the Kickstarter run. But um, but ultimately, it's some good ideas. It is, you know, from an X-Fantasy game, it, it, it's the kind of thing you look through and you get to get you inspired. Um, I think that's probably what, it, what it's best suited for, is inspiring a DM to come up with a, a new adventure. Or really, some of the, the characters in there, the NPCs, could totally just be inspiration as a player uh, for a character concept. Um... But I'm pretty sure at least the PDF is really pretty cheap. If you're looking at running a fantasy campaign and you like creating things yourself, but just want some ideas, something to, something to think about, um, it's worth worth checking out, I suppose. Uh, some of the formatting, though. I have hyperlinks in my physical book. They don't work. They're dead.
maybe the PDF one will work better. Um, but yeah, I'll link to where you can get it online. Um, if you're interested, check it out, and have a great day.